Today I'm going to show you how to create these three abstract procedural textures. These are ordered from the least complex on the left to the most complex on the right. And as a thanks to everyone who has been supporting me so far, I'm going to put this blend file on my Patreon and Gumroad for free, which by the way is a great way to support me if you like what I do. A user on my Discord named Twer recently used my gold texture for their crown model, which is really cool. If you use any of my tutorials to create something, I encourage you to share it on my Discord. It's really neat for me to see what some users in the community are doing with them. To set up our scene, let's get rid of this cube and bring in a plane. Uh, change the entire middle area to your shader editor and just put that material that was on our cube on our plane. Hit N to get rid of this shelf on the right. Let's change the top right to the 3D viewport. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Zoom in and hold down Z and move my mouse up to go into render mode. This is the first texture we're going to create. Just take a second for yourself here and maybe guess what you think this is comprised of. It may look kind of familiar to you. This is a Voronoi color and position outputs combined and distorted by a noise texture. So I'll show you how I set that up. We can start by getting rid of this principal BSDF and I'm going to bring in a texture coordinate node. Let's come out of object here and I'm going to add in a noise texture. Place that here and add in a mix RGB. Place that here and just run object into color 2 as well. I'm going to change the scale on the noise to 10 and uh, we'll just choose uh, 1 for the mix for now so it's not affecting the final product there. Let's bring in a Voronoi node and just place it right after that mix RGB and we can see uh, this is what the color output looks like here. And this is what the position output looks like here. So we're going to use both of those uh, just in our final output there. I'm going to attach a color ramp to this position right here. And then come out of the color here and put another color ramp on that one as well. So now I've got these two color ramps. And then I'm going to mix these two together by holding down Control, Shift, and right-clicking and dragging from one to the other. And it just creates this mix RGB, which I'll open up here. And I'll just leave it on mix and I'll change this to 0.98. So it's very much in favor of this bottom one here. For the top color ramp, I'll leave that as is, but for the bottom one, I'm going to change this bottom color to kind of a brown color, maybe something like this. Then change the type here to HSB and then change it to FAR. And then what that does is it creates this uh, kind of effect where it goes through all the colors, takes the longest distance it can to get to white. Then lastly, I'm going to decrease this mix right here and uh, change it to 0 0.7. There we go. And there we go. We've got our color. So basically, you can see the, um, you know, the color is showing through slightly from the Voronoi, creating these little cells here. And the position is having more of an influence by creating this kind of diagonal gradient effect with this color ramp here. This is the second texture we're going to create, so just take a second and try to guess what you think this is made up of. You might have guessed it's kind of a Voronoi distance to edge uh, mixed with a wave texture there and kind of overlaid with another Voronoi distance to edge. So I'll show you how I set that up. Let's start by deleting this principled BSDF. I'm going to bring in a Voronoi node, just place it here. Now let's change this to distance to edge and 2D. Let's see what's happening there. It's just these cell patterns there. We'll change the scale to 3 and the randomness to 0.7. While this Voronoi is highlighted, hit Control T and make sure this object is going into the mapping node we've got set up there. Let's uh, grab a color ramp, place it right after here, and uh, we'll change the bottom to 0.1. Then we'll bring this white way down to 0.06. For the bottom color on this color ramp, the white color, let's change this to a light blue. Grab the mapping node, the Voronoi, and the color ramp, and hit Control shift d That duplicates all three of them while leaving them attached. Let's reset this color ramp. Then let's mix together these color ramps here with Control shift and right-click and drag from one to the other and open this mix up. Then let's adjust this color ramp right here. Let's change this X to negative 0.07. The same with the Y, negative 0.07. We can see 
it's uh, offset that second one slightly. Let's adjust this color ramp. I'm going to set the black to 0.19 and I'll set the white to 0.2. So now we can see uh, this black is kind of showing through that blue. So let's fix that. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this color ramp with Control Shift D so it remains attached once again to this top area here. And I'm going to reset it. I'm going to set the black to 0.1. Uh, let's see what this is. And then the white to 0.12. And we can see it's pretty much the same as this right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed that into this mix right here. Uh, basically what it's going to say is everything where this black in this map here, we're going to show this right here. And everything where you know it's white, we're going to show this here. So let's do that. We can see it's worked. Now we've got the black behind this blue, which is kind of cool. Let's keep going here. I'm going to run out of object again here, and this time let's set up a wave texture. And I'm going to grab this untampered with mapping node, just duplicate it, and put it right before that wave texture as well. Uh, we'll set the scale at 8. Then we'll just set up a color ramp right after here, and let's zoom in a little bit, see what's going on. I'm going to set the black to 0.1 and the white is going to come down to 0.15. So we got a pretty sharp line, with mostly white there. Then let's mix that together with this Borno right here, the one that's uh, got those big black spots there, by holding down Control Shift, right clicking and dragging from one to the other. And uh, what we'll do is we'll set this to, uh, to mix, but we're going to plug this top part in the top, and this wave into the bottom. And so now what we've got is we've got these wave texture parts where the black parts were and this gray uh, in that other spot. So I'm just gonna change that to white. Then we can change the rotation right here on this mapping node. So we can set it like this right here. And that looks pretty good already. Just gonna make these lines a little thicker. I'm gonna set the white on this color ramp to 0.37 and the black change that to 0.32 and uh, that's a little closer to the original and the last thing I wanted to do is make all of these uh, rotations a little bit different from each other so uh, I thought maybe an easy way to do that was to just use a Voronoi node so I'll just place that right here run this into vector I'm going to change this to 2d and change the scale with the same as before 3 and then the randomness is going to be 0.7 and I'm going to leave it on F1 and Euclidean. Let's run out of color and go right into a color ramp. I'm going to place a math node right after here and change this to multiply add. So we can't plug this multiply add right into the rotation because it's a you know single value and this is three values. But what we can do is put a node there uh, just to go in between. And that node is just a combine X, Y, Z. So I'll bring that in, not that one. I guess that one might work just fine, but I'll bring in a combine X, Y, Z. And I'm gonna run this into the, the Y. No, the uh, Z, pardon me, because that's what I had rotated here. Then I'm gonna run this into the rotation right here. And now we've got a different value uh, each time because of this Voronoi color output there. I'm gonna change this to 0.5 and the add to one. Then let's look at the final product here. We can see uh, each you know, version of these lines is rotated slightly differently. We can control that with uh, this right here, for instance. We could rotate them all quite drastically or even rotate them all individually with this value right here. We could also come to the color ramp and use this black slider to control the threshold of how many cells are affected by that uh, rotation element there. We could also change the scale too, get several tr uh, smaller cells within here, and maybe change this um, scale on this guy here as well, get these smaller, maybe get some distortion in there as well. Maybe change this to like four or something, so we get uh, you know a little bit of movement in there as well. The possibilities really are endless. We could change this so there's a lot more black here. Pretty much all black, looks pretty cool. OK, 
Okay, on to texture number three. This one here uh, primarily uses a wave texture. And you can see uh, with the green and the orange, to some points the orange crosses over the green, and some points the green crosses over the orange. This is used uh, creating some masks with a checkered texture. So I'll, I'll show you how I set that up. To start with this texture, let's get rid of that principal BSDF, bring in a wave texture. While this is highlighted, hit Control T and it'll bring up your texture coordinate and mapping node. Let's just look at the color. We see a bunch of vertical lines and let's place a color ramp right afterwards. We'll change the scale on the wave to 0.91. Then let's change these sliders on the color ramp. We're going to change the black to 0 0.095 and the white is going to go to 0 0.105. So you have uh, fairly skinny black lines. Let's duplicate this color ramp with Control Shift D so it remains attached to that wave texture. Let's just reset it. We're gonna leave the black at zero and the white we're gonna bring down to 0 0.105. We're gonna put two points in the middle there. This first one's gonna be white. So let's set that up. That's gonna be at 0 0.02. And this next one in the middle of these two whites, we're gonna change that to black. Let's set this to 0 0.095. So far, I have these two color ramps. This first one is just vertical black lines. And then this other one is the vertical lines, but it's got a different pattern. It's got that black stripe in the middle. Let's bring out this mapping node and replace it with a vector rotate node. Let's just place it right here. If we change this angle, we can rotate everything. So let's change this to 30.9. Let's grab these four nodes, the vector rotate wave and two color ramps, and hit Control Shift D. It duplicates everything while leaving it attached to that texture coordinate. We can see we've got the same pattern here, but let's change something. Let's just change this angle here. We know that the top one was 30.9, so why don't we do 180 minus 30.9? And that leaves us with this other pattern here, just sort of uh, flipped around in the opposite direction there. Next, let's, let's mix these two patterns together with control shift, right click and drag from one of these color ramps to the other. And uh, we've got this interesting pattern with this mix. Let's open this up. We could change it to multiply as well and drag it across to one, but it still doesn't give us a very good effect. Um, it's just kind of overlaid across each other. Everything that was black, uh, you know, just remains black because black is zero and zero times whatever uh, becomes zero. Let's change this back to mix and change it back to 0.5 got something in the middle now. If we used this as a factor, plug that in, we can see that it actually overlays one over top of the other. If we were to uh, try to use this factor, it wouldn't work out quite so well. We'd also need to switch these back and forth here because uh, this is showing you that's a black mask and it has to line up with the black uh, color that's going to be in this socket here, which is this guy here. Let's switch these back though. I'm going to plug that in there and plug these back. And now we've got this pattern. Let's go forward from here. I'm going to grab all six of these nodes in the middle. I'm not going to touch the texture coordinate or this mix. I'm going to control shift D, all of these guys, so it remains attached to the texture coordinate because we're going to do something similar on the bottom. We're just going to put two other lines here uh, that are near diagonal in the middle of these existing ones. So for this first one, I'm just going to kind of uh, create a temporary mix here. Didn't mean to plug that in to here. So let's plug that back into here. Um, but if we look at this right here, um, it's actually both of those lines superimposed over each other. You can't really see because they're the same in the same spot right now. But if we move this back and forth, we can see we're you know moving it uh, laterally there. So we want to choose a point where it's in the middle. Why don't we just do 3.2? That looks pretty good. Um, we could line it up a little bit better if we wanted. Maybe 3.1 looks slightly better. I'm happy with that. Let's get rid of this mix. It's not useful anymore. So for this top color ramp, I'm going to get rid of this black at the very bottom. And let's change this to kind of an orange color. Then this black, let's set this at uh, 0 0.05. And this white at the top, let the, let's set this at 0 0.05. 8.5, just like that. So now if you look at it, we can see these orange lines here. For the color ramp right below it, let's set this black at 0 0.059, and the white will set at 0 0.06. For these other two color ramps down here, we could set them the same. 
or we could just kind of duplicate these and get rid of the extra ones. So I'm just shift Ding those color amps there and just getting rid of these other ones that we had left over when we copied this entire top section. Uh, we're not going to change anything except for the color right here with this orange is. Let's just change this to kind of a soft green, something like this here. Now we can see this is going the other direction. Um, why don't we do something more like all of a little bit of yellow in there? Looks pretty good. It's totally up to you. Yeah, so now we can see this is going in the other direction, just like the one at the top was. Let's make sure that the green isn't overlaid with this one uh, at the top here as well. So I'm just going to create a temporary mix here so we can overlay these on top of each other. Let's see what's going on. We want this green to be in the middle. So let's just see what's an appropriate number to put here. Uh, 3.1 seems to work great again. So you can change that up if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Let's set up an overlay. Control, shift, right click and drag from that orange to the green note. And let's just see what this looks like now. We've got these spots where, um, you know, it's uh, kind of overlaid on top of each other. And we can plug this top mask in if we want and have the orange over top of the green. But I want uh, some points where the green goes over top of the orange as well. So that's where the checker texture comes in. There are a lot of different ways to do this, and this is just one of them. But basically what we need, uh, let's actually go back to this just to illustrate it. Basically what we need is one strip of black right here, like all this area, one strip of white in this area here, and black down here. So each time these cross over, we'll have a different shade, either black or white. So let's illustrate that. I'm gonna just get a preview coming out of Generated. And I'm going to bring in a checker texture. Let's just place it right here. And we see that this is doing uh, something wrong. We want it to go into the vector. We'll change this bottom color to black. And then let's put a mapping node here so we can manipulate it a little bit. We don't want these vertical, checker, uh, vertical checkers as well. So let's change this X to 0.1. And now it's just these long stripes. Uh, we could have done this with a wave or even a Voronoi or, you know, a couple other ways as well. Uh, but checker is just one of the ways to do it. Let's change this to three. Now let's overlay this with this mix right here. Just see what we've got so far. Uh, it's in the right, or it's the right proportions, but it's not in the right area. We need to move it up a little bit. Uh, something like this. Let's go like 0.15. That looks pretty good. Maybe 0.16 would be slightly better. Yeah, that looks good. So let's get rid of this second mix for a second and just disconnect this one entirely. Uh, what we want to do is feed this checker into the factor there, and then we'll feed this second color ramp into color one here. We can see it kind of chops off this one section here. We're going to change this second color to white. And uh, something's wrong here. We need to change this completely to white so that it uh, doesn't have that faded gray right there. Then let's duplicate this mix and plug this into the factor this time. And uh, then we'll plug this into color two. And we'll change this to white. And let's see what this one is doing. Uh, let's add this all together with a third mix RGB. We'll place it right here. This one is going to go into the factor. And then this color here is going to go into color 2. And uh, this guy here is going to go into color 1. So let's quickly break down what's happening because it's a little bit complex. Uh, first of all, this checker texture allows me to only have this line segment texture uh, in the black portions because uh, it's going into this part here. So that... Uh, like I said, here's the black portion, and here's this texture only appearing in that black portion. And uh, that black portion allows us just to make a cut in one spot. Uh, basically, for this line portion here, I only want the cuts to be you know, every second spot instead of being here, here, and here. I only want it to be here and here. So that's the result here. We only get the cuts here and way up here, not the cuts here that would uh, have resulted without this, this checker texture. So that uh, cut allows us just to have these one spots where the orange is over top of the green. And then this part is just like it was before. Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's mix that with the top up here. Uh, if we do 
You can see it doesn't really look that good. We need to do one more thing, and that's create a mask so that this entire area here is on top of this area right here. And to do that, I'm just going to multiply these two together right here with Control Shift right click drag. Um, oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that because that messes up my other setup there. So what I'm going to do instead is just duplicate this mix and we'll plug these in independently. And then we'll switch this to multiply and change it to one. And we can see the result is this nice mask we've got here. And if we plug this into the factor, we can see that uh, this black and white is now overlaid on top of that green and orange. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching and you're able to follow along easily enough. As I mentioned, I'm going to put this blend file on my Patreon and Gumroad for free. I encourage you to try pushing the boundaries of this stuff. Try to come up with something cool because I'll bet it's easier than you think it is. I played with that third texture for a while, came up with this. Thanks for watching.